Yeah, we were watching along with us, Zane, is uh, the Charles Taylor hearing, I should say, is Mark Ellis. He's the executive director of the International Bar Association. Mark, thanks uh, for being with us. It's interesting to hear um, Charles Taylor saying, he said, I never stood a chance. And he was talking about the uh, what he described as the broader contextual matrix, uh, the political matrix, he should say the framework uh, that uh, the prosecution failed to present in their case against uh, Charles Taylor. What impact do you think this statement is actually going to have on the sentencing? I, I don't think it will have any impact on the sentencing because the sentencing guidelines are fairly straightforward as to what the court is going to look at uh, in, in setting this sentence. The one point Find our viewers there that he was convicted uh, but because of the fact that this a broader chain of command, uh, having been, been the, the president of Liberia at the time that these atrocities took place, the court then found that he was guilty because of that chain of command. Yeah, I think this is important. Now, he, he was he was convicted of aiding and abetting. Could but continue to be a long legal process. I mean, it may not end on May 30th with uh, the sentencing where we're looking at an appeal then, and that could be another few years down the road, couldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and it will, they will appeal. Right, Mark, uh, could... thank you so much for that. Of course, we'll continue to check in with Mark uh, throughout the day here on uh, CNN. Mark Ellis there, he's the executive director of the International Bar Association. He is accused of orchestrating Europe's worst atrocity since World War II, the massacre of thousands of Muslim men and boys in Srebrenica. Ratko Mladic, the commander of the Bosnian Serb army during the war in Bosnia, went on trial a few hours ago at The Hague in the Netherlands. It started... Well, let's go back now to Mark Ellis. Mark, a busy day there at, uh, the, uh, at the Hague for us. Let's get some analysis now on this particular trial and that's of, of Ratko Mladic. It's, it certainly takes what the prosecution has been doing now is providing that contextual uh, framework as we've been hearing a lot this morning of the history uh, and what kind of a role that Mladic himself played. Yeah, and I think this is important that it's such a momentous day for international justice because we have on one side... Again, there for us. Uh, of course, two very important uh, cases and trials uh, having taken place and continue to take place uh, there at The Hague. One is for the former special court for, the, uh, for, for, for Sierra Leone and, of course, for the former Yugoslavia. Uh, we will bring you more as we get it. For now, we're taking a short break. We'll be right back. CNN, the world's news leader. This is World One, live from London. I'm Monita Rajpal. We want to bring you up to date on some of the other stories uh, that we are following here on CNN. And particularly, let's begin with Greece, where the country is putting together a caretaker government until new elections can be held, most likely in June. Nine days of talks between the three biggest parties failed to produce a coalition. No party won anything close to a majority in this month's election. New Democracy, led by Antonis Samaras, uh, uh, was in the coalition government before the ballot. Uh, it lost a lot of support, but still ended with the most seats in Parliament. It is arguing for Greece to stay in the Eurozone. Now, one of Samaras' coalition allies was Evangelos Venizelos. Uh, he's the leader of the center-left PASOK party. Venizelos and Samaras tried and failed to form a new government with other pro-reform parties who might have supported austerity. Now, the man everyone is watching now is Alexis Tsipras. Uh, he is his party, the radical left Syriza, gained support by strongly rejecting the austerity policy. Tsipras has uh, also tried to form a government, but couldn't muster enough seats. Now, in a last effort to break the deadlock, President Papoulias asked lawmakers to support a government of technocrats, but that idea fell flat too. And now, more than ever, Greece is facing the prospect of leaving the Eurozone. Norwegian man uh, set himself on fire and tried to break into the trial of Anders Breivik. Witnesses say the man shouted, shoot me as he was tackled by police he was taken to hospital with serious injuries to his torso for some Anders survivors Breivik. seeing Breivik in court helped them deal with the terrible memories of last summer Bjorn Eichler is a survivor of the Otoya shootings he joins us now live from Oslo Bjorn thank you very much for being with us you know it's um, I can only imagine uh, what it must have been like last summer but also I'm curious to know what emotions are you feeling when you see Breivik in court uh, well, for me, it's uh, fairly okay to see Breivik. Uh... Wish you well uh, in your continued recovery. Bjorn Euler there in uh, Oslo. Thank you so much. You're watching World One. We'll be right back.
As Charles Taylor faces justice, the hunt for another war crime suspect is causing chaos and bloodshed in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It is spilling over as a refugee crisis in neighboring Rwanda continues. Bosco Ntagenda is wanted by the International Court for Crimes Against Humanity. He is accused of forcing children to become soldiers. Well, many football leagues, season, well, now that the football league season is ending across Europe, but for many, players are turning their attention to Euro 2012. And Amanda Davis is a look at who might be left out in the cold. Yeah, some players who thought they were, might be heading to mm. Euro 2012, uh, it seems that they might get an opportunity to go on holiday instead. As a new era for English football gets underway, it looks set to be the end Bring of... Bring up better than me. Uh, well, you've got to laugh, haven't you, when that's Barack Obama making those jokes, but with that facial hair. Well, the fact, that, the fact that you're being mentioned by the President yes. of the United States, I think that's a pretty good deal, big deal. That's true, yes, you that's know, very true. You know you've made it when. <laughs> You even but of a joke. Even if it's yeah, even if it's a joke, yeah. it's not very complimentary. It's fine. I'd take yeah. it. Okay. I, if he can make fun of me, that's fine. I, I'll take it. <laughs> See <laughs> oh, you right, later. Amanda, thank you very much. We make fun of you all the time. I know, yeah. but you're not the All president right. of the United States. <laughs> I'm the president of World One here, live from London. I'm Zane Virgin. And I'm Anita Rajpal. Thank you for joining us. Stay with us. The headlines are next.